Hello friends, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink, back with another couple holiday cards, as well as a small-ish unboxing. <laughs> Those that know me and have seen my few wax seal videos over the years, as well as me just raving about wax seals, would know that of course I jumped on the Spellbinders, uh, sealed by Spellbinders collection. Love it. They were, oh my goodness, they released so much stuff. It, it took me a while. I still don't have all of it, but of course I want it all. Um, first off is this wax seal kit. I thought I would show this, um, just like unbox it. This would make a really nice gift, whether you got it for yourself or you want to give it to someone. It comes all fancy in this nice little packaging. The band on the box I showed there um, has instructions and whatnot on the inside. This is the type of gift you can get for just about anyone. Like it doesn't have to be another card maker, um, you know, because wax seals, like anyone can do wax seals. And I don't know, again, I just, I love them. They're, there's something just fascinating to me about wax seals and playing with them and making them and all the things. And I am very, very happy <laughs> that all the companies are starting to jump on this, uh, I don't want to call it a trend because they've literally been around for centuries, but you know what I mean. Anyway, this is the kit. So it's got the box, the band with the instructions on the inside. It's all form fitted and fancy. You get your little furnace. You get a um, silicone mat, the wax spoon, uh, a wax stamper that is exclusive to this kit. That, and it says like for you on it. And then you get this cute little container of the gold wax mounts. And again, I don't know what it is, but I was like, I love this little container. I need more. <laughs> anyway, the other thing I was like, huh, the inserts thankfully come right out. Like they didn't glue them into the box, which I'm very glad they didn't. Because I was like, oh, if you pop the inserts out, I'm going to use the box for storage. Because, you know, this will be just perfect. You can fit way more in it. But if you wanted to like gift this to someone with extras pop the inserts out and you can fit a ton in here I was just like oh how many things can I put in here so because of course like I said this collection is ginormous they released so many like wax stampers a ton of different colors of melts the melts I'll show I have some of the wax stampers like I said I couldn't get it all I I gotta space things out man um but there's lots and then all the coordinating wafer dyes and just there's so many things so first off though was the kit so there's my my little unboxing of the wax seal kit then their wax melts like I said they did all these colors and I took all of these this I picked up from one of Jennifer McGuire's videos um this is a container to, meant to store embroidery floss I don't have a link for this I had this container in my stash because I have several of them um, you know, for cross stitching and but my plan was always to organize all my embroidery floss. Did I? No, I used them for wax melts. So it was a good idea though. So what I did was I just dumped the bags of wax melts, all the Spellbinders ones. And then on the packaging, it had, you know, the name and number. And since I do this for a job, I need to like keep track of these sorts of things. So I just cut those off and then I showed there, I just adhered them to the sides of the container with double-sided adhesive. So then I've got, you know, all the different colors labeled and it's all fabulous. And I still got a little space left in this container. So it would have been nicer. I wish I had had, I know I have another one around here and I couldn't find it though, but one of the embroidery floss containers where you can move the spacers, you know, and move them around, that would have been really nice. But this works great. So I was just playing around and started um, unboxing the, the seals I'd bought. I've had this stuff sitting and I was waiting to share it with everyone and do unboxings and show because a bunch of it's out of stock because of course it's popular, it's fabulous, but now or never. So just started opening it because Merry Christmas to me. So another thing I've shown in... I think it was one of the live streams. I will have a playlist at the end of this video. I've done a playlist and I'll keep adding to it. You doing like talking about wax seals, using them in videos, etc. But I showed that with a lot of my wax seal stampers, I unscrew them from the handle and then I store them face up like you can see here, just in a container in a drawer. That way I can see immediately what I've got. I don't get rid of any of the handles. I keep them because especially if I'm doing multiple things at once, yada, yada, yada. I just put those in the back of the drawer and that works for me. 
So that's what I do. And then another tip I picked up, this one from one of Yana Smakua's videos, is I take a Sharpie and I mark on the top portion of the metal of the uh, wax stamper. I just put a little dot where basically what I would call the bottom of the images, because if I'm going to actually pour wax onto a project and seal it, that little dot shows me where to line it up because if it's got words or it's an image that needs to be straight. Most of the time that's not going to matter, but I thought I would show that anyway because, you know, most of us are kind of making wax seals separately and then adhering, which I'm going to show here in a second. So yeah, and then I use the Sharpie to like label the sides of it because again, I do this as a job and I need to kind of keep track of what's what and also so I don't order, you know, doubles. <laughs> so that was the, the basics of that. Let's get into the actual card cards because I made two. I started with just some fog cardstock, just nice light gray, and I heavily splattered it with some Amsterdam white liquid, um, liquid white, liquid white, is that what they call it? Titanium white, um, acrylic ink, white craft paint will work, I've used white gouache, any of those. I just wanted to splatter those backgrounds and then I set them aside to dry. While they're drying, I'm going to start playing with wax melts. So with your furnace, that's the one thing the kit doesn't come with is a tea light. So if you're giving this as a gift, I highly recommend like tossing a couple tea lights in there. They'd fit like under the little furnace in the box. So you just need a tea light. Again, I've shown in other videos, I've used this method with the furnace and the tea light. I've also done it with my heat tool for heat embossing. That works great too. Either or. Biggest thing to always remember, whether you're using a tea light or you're using your embossing tool, is things get very, very hot. Be very aware. Keep, you know, your cardstock away. Like I move my cardstock away from the open flame. All of those things. Like just, again, you're playing with things that are going to cause burns if you're not paying attention. So I like to be a little more focused when I'm doing this and keep things, you know, off cam like around the screen where you can't really see. I have so much stuff piled up, but I keep, you know, space in between heat source, cardstock, etc. So I just had the tea light lit. I used four of the black wax melts, poured it in a circle, pressed in my little stamper. I didn't like how the first one turned out just because. You know, perfection is always overrated, but the nice thing with these is if you're not happy with it, remelt it. It's it's fine. You can remelt these many, many times. You don't have to cut them up. Um, they just fit a little better in the wax spoon. And yeah, for these cards, I'm using the Gifts on Arrival wax seal stamp. It's adorable. You can't really see anything because it's black, um, but it's the cute little like vintage car with a bunch of gifts on it. You'll see in the, in the like finished cards exactly what it looks like. So I'm going to emphasize it. Once I was done making my two seals, I poured out the remaining on the silicone mat there because I'll let that cool off. And then I'm just going to throw that back in the container because I'll use it next time when I want black wax seals. And then while the spoon was still hot, I carefully wiped that out with, just with some paper towel just to clean it out. Another thing that works is you can just let it completely cool off and it will peel out of the spoon, which is also very satisfying. So either or works. But if you're wiping it out when it's hot, let it just be again, be aware like hot metal, not fun on fingers. So next thing, moving on to another heat source, <laughs> I'm going to do some hot foiling. I have like leftover little bits of glimmer hot foil, these gold hot foil. I keep them, you can just see the handle of it. I have a little mug right by my hot foil machine and I just keep those little bits. I just throw them in there. They're perfect for these little sentiments and little tiny things like this. So I have my Glimmer Hot Foil machine. It's on. It's ready to go. And I'm going to use a couple of sentiments from this mini Christmas sentiment strips that I showed right at the beginning of this little segment. There's so many sentiments in this. I bought this a while ago. I'm not even sure. Um, but yeah, there is a ton of sentiments in there. And then another little trick, which I was showing there on screen. I can't keep up with the video with my voiceover. I'm getting distracted. Anyway, um, I've shown this in recent hot foiling videos is what I'm finding is really helpful, especially with these tiny little sentiments and tiny little pieces of foil is I taped the foil, as you saw there, to the cardstock with my little spellbinders tape. So I taped the foil first. You know, I trimmed it to, you know, the size, basically, of these sentiments. I'm just using scraps of Simon Smooth White cardstock 
tape the foil in place and then I just tape those two sentiments I'm using with the, the, you know, the words facing the pretty side of the foil there. And so everything's taped in place. And then I pop that onto my machine. Little sentiments like this that are in like long, narrow lines, they work better in this orientation, like kind of portrait orientation. When you're going to run it through your machine, they foil better. Just another FYI. So I've got everything, you know, taped into place. I stuck it on the machine, let it heat up ran it through my die cut machine here again using the spellbinders platinum six and then i just got to peel off the tape and i've got these perfectly foiled sentiments and i just reused the tape in between these and i actually use the tape again because i'm going to die cut those there's a coordinating wafer die that comes in that little mini christmas sentiment strip foil pack say that three times fast and it's huge it's like at least six inches long or something um so i was able to die cut two sentiments at a time with that sentiment strip wafer die that comes with those little hot foil sentiments which was perfect because I of course spent a ridiculous amount of time like digging through my wafer dies to find one that would fit and I was like it's with the set anyway so I got my sentiments die sentiments hot foiled and die cut and then I'm using the spellbinders sealed christmas tree squiggles etched dice <laughs> They have, like I had said earlier, there's a ton of wafer dies that they designed to like go with all of these wax seals and they're more delicate and have like long, long bases, I guess, you know, so you can do little clusters that you can hold with the wax seal. Like there's just, there's so much. Serious. I lost my mind when I saw this release when it came out. It's been what, a month and a half, something. And yeah, gonna collect it all. Because, yeah, I, I love wax seals. I've been collecting them for years and they're just fun. So, use these. I die cut white cardstock, black cardstock, and gold glitter cardstock with these sealed Christmas tree squiggles. And I'm adhering them to those backgrounds that I had splattered at the beginning. And I just apply a thin line of glue, which is right down the center. I don't even bother with the little, like, branchy bits. Because, again, these are, like, little fine finicky die cuts. And ain't no one got time for all of that so I just ran that line of adhesive down adhered them into place onto my background and then I die cut some matte gold cardstock with the sealed twine etched wafer die this one favorite I ordered it kind of on a whim when I ordered you know a bunch of the other stuff because I was like like I understood it but I was like am I really gonna use it love it the minute I folded it over I was like this is perfect <laughs> I love how it looks like you've wrapped twine, you know, around, but because it was die cut from the matte gold, I get the gold shiny finish. And also it's not as bulky as twine, you know? So it's just, I like it. I, you die cut it twice. You adhere it just like I showed, fold it over. I just tape the backs, done. Love it. And then I've got this perfect round little spot to adhere my wax seal. Or if you're feeling adventurous, you could pour your wax directly there. I, I wasn't I wasn't feeling it for this, you know, I'm getting more comfortable with like making wax seals directly onto some of my cards. But, you know, after you've spent all the time making the actual card, I'm like, knowing me, I'm like, I'm going to like mess it up. <laughs> so it's safer to just pour it separately and then I'll show how I adhere it. So I did both those backgrounds with um, the sealed Christmas tree squiggles. That also has the circles and the stars in that set. That's what I die cut from like little scraps of the card stalks from the trees. Adhered those into place. I had a couple more trees to put on the inside of the cards, of course, along with another hot foil sentiment. And then I adhered the backgrounds to the card bases. These card bases are top folding A2 white note cards. So I adhered the backgrounds into place. Once those are adhered, I just put them under my misty. Just hold everything down, let the glue dry. And then I put um, foam strips on the back of those foiled sentiments. And then to adhere the wax seals, I've shown this again in other videos, is since I'm not pouring directly onto the card, you need a good strong adhesive. I personally don't like using liquid glue because I just find it doesn't hold. I've tried it, I've tested it a few times and I can, they'll just pop right off. I like a, what I, a, you know, what I refer to as dry adhesive. So like this red line tape, score tape, any like glue dots, any of those strong adhesives that aren't liquid basically um simon's big mama foam tape that also works but it will make 
more bulk. But yeah, red line tape works great. That's what I used here. Um, cause yeah, you're, you're, adhe you're literally adhering wax. So it, it gets a little finicky sometimes. I know some others have been using liquid glue and it's worked for them. I just, I haven't, it doesn't work for me. It's frustrating. <laughs> but anyway, I got them adhered. And then I pulled out these Spectrum Noir acrylic paint markers. I've shown other ones similar to this in other videos as well. This was a set of four. They don't have the chisel tips like the other ones I use. Um, these have like more bullet nibs. If you've ever worked with a Sharpie paint pen, same concept. You have to shake them up really well. And when they're brand new, you have to like press it down multiple times to get the, the ink like flowing through the tip. With this, I found because this was such a fine detail little image that I'm not um, I'm not pulling the brush along the image. I'm dabbing really, really lightly and then even using my finger to kind of remove to, um, some of the excess because one, it is a brand new marker and it wants to put down like a ton of ink. And then that was just kind of filling in the details. So I'm just really, really lightly dabbing on top of the wax seal image. And then, yeah, using my finger to remove any excess. And then what got on my finger, I just used some hand sanitizer. That took it right off. Because, um, yeah, that just enhances this cute little car image with the gifts. And that was it. I paired these with some gold envelopes. So I've got some black, gold, and white Christmas cards to add to my stash. Because, you know, I got to add, I got to do something with black, gold, and white. It's, it, I feel like it's been a while since the last time I made black, gold, and white cards. I'll have to link to that playlist too because there's quite a few in there. <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed my rambly, wordy, unboxing, sharing. And again, I, I barely touched on what all Spellbinders were released. And I know they have more coming and I, I can't wait. I'm just, I'm loving it. I don't know what it is. I love wax seals. They're just fun. So as always, I'll have a link below the video to my blog post. I'll link to all the supplies I used, all that stuff find it in the description box below and I will see you all very soon in the next video. Bye!